79 and this video is about well scrap steel and how I took some to improve my little personal shooting range a lot of people can remember the first gun they ever shot but do you remember what you was shooting at at the time I can it was a pop can and that was the greatest feeling in the world when I finally hit that thing. Now, I've seen uh, a lot of videos out here, people shooting pop cans, two liter bottles, paper targets, steel targets, televisions, radios, what have you. It's all fun. But uh, a few weeks back, I got the chance to shoot with a friend and he had some steel targets at his place. And I gotta tell you, it's hard to go back to paper once you've shot some steel. It's very addictive. Now, if you've seen a lot of these other YouTube videos, say for instance, uh, Brandon 401, 401, Big Daddy Hoffman 1911, and of course Hickok 45, those guys have got some really nice personal shooting ranges. They got the steel targets. And from the looks of them, it looks like I got quite a bit invested in them. Now, as for myself, I don't shoot all different calibers like they do. I'm just mostly 9mm, 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, maybe a 45 or a 38 every once in a while. You know, I'm not going to put a lot of money or make a very elaborate shooting area. I don't need it. But over in here I've made my own little improvements to my handgun range I made some improvements to what I call my rifle lane and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute but first let me show you what I used and how I done it y'all see this little piece of steel right here well I begin with a sheet that was about well three times this big and you can see it's already been shot at we'll get to that part later in the video my cousin Randy will be doing a shooting uh, the guns used in this video will be a Marlin XT 22 TR chambered in 22 long rifle and a Smith & Wesson M&P shield chambered in 9mm Randy will do the shooting part while I operate the camera but like I was saying I had a piece of this scrap here it was about three times this size and it had already been cut in places so all these crooked lines and everything that's not on me but it is a quarter inch thick that's some kind of hurts But anyhow, my main concern was, you know, not knocking the paint off or anything like that, but uh, is it going to leave any indentations or anything like that? That was my main concern. As you can see here, I had two holes drilled in it. Uh, my cousin Randy did that. My drill bits would not touch this. They were made for steel. Wouldn't phase this. So he had some Milwaukee drill bits and brought them over and we managed to get a couple of holes in this. And he also drilled all the holes in the other little targets you'll see here in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, this, this thing was awesome. Let me show you how I put together some stuff here now. I uh, also had some other angle iron and part of a bed frame. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This right here is just part of a bed frame one of my tenants left in one of my rental homes. They leave stuff sometimes. If I can't burn it, I'll put it to good use. You can tell where I cut it here and there. What I'll do, drill a hole right here, and then on this side, I'll cut it at an angle down like that. And then on this side, at an angle like that. I got a Craftsman handheld angle grinder, and I just put the cutting pad on it, and that's what I use. That's what I use to cut the other metal. 
Also, I had about a uh, six foot piece of good angle iron. This is quarter inch right here. Drilled a hole in it, cut it in half. That was already boogered up there. What I'll do, like I said, the hole here, the hole right there, I'll knock this in the ground first with a sledgehammer and then I'll put this up on it and line the holes up, put a bolt through it, put the nut on it, lock washer, good to go. Didn't cost me nothing but a little bit of time and a little bit of elbow grease. Now those of you that have seen my videos before, you'll recognize this spot here. And yeah, I've let it grow up. This is where we'd target shoot for the last couple of years. Now if you notice that uh, brown spot down in there, that big long brown patch, that's a creek bed. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, during late winter, early spring, these underground springs would pop up and these creeks would be running from where the snow was mounting off, uh, melting off the mountains. Now that uh, target frame right there, I made that out of PVC pipe. And that over there, two pieces of I-beam steel, it's uh, being held up by an old cable and it's being supported by two metal fence posts. When this all dies down uh, late this fall, I'm gonna move that and this other's out of here. So I didn't have to move too much farther. Let's go over this way some. Now this cinder block, uh, or a concrete uh, block here, well, this big slab of concrete was the back porch to my grandparents' house that sat here many years ago. And I just decided, what the heck, there was a lot of clutter around it as far as bushes and weeds and thistle briars, that kind of thing. Cleaned it off. I need to sweep it off. Just mowed in here not too long ago. Found an old sewing machine cabinet. That's what I'll set my gun rest on. And I'll fire at that rifle aim there. That's what I call it. I cut down a few trees, knocked down some bushes, and uh, made a pretty good rifle lane. Also got uh, this glider I found up in my garage, put a little paint on the seat, people can kick back, take a load off. Now right here, here's kind of a table view. This would be what I'd be looking at through my scope. I'll get a closer look here in just a minute. It's about 80 yards up to there, to the last target. Alright, let's see how this sounds. Oh, you shot a branch off. <laughs> I think I it. Yeah. Oh, you can about to see the target now. Yeah, we, there we go. Shoot, shoot some more of them limbs off, and uh, that target will be fully visible. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it now. Oh yeah. Right. I think Hickok 45 says I'm going for the gong when he goes for his target that's way out there. Gong show, huh? Well, he can take a uh, Glock 27 and hit a, that gong 230 yards away. So we're pretty much way out of his league. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mixture of ammo. That must have been one of them Boy George rounds. Got it. Hit the invisible target. All right. All right, here's one, the first one on the heel. It's just a piece of quarter inch angle arm steel with a, uh, well, one of the pieces I used off the old cattle trailer. Just drilled a hole in it right there, put a bolt through it, put the nut on the back, lock washer, washer on the front, and knocked it in the ground with sledgehammer. Well, actually, I took a sledgehammer, knocked this in the ground first, and then I bolted that on. The ones on the tree stumps, I just drilled a hole on that one and that one, nailed it to the stump. I made sure to uh, cut the tree stump kind of at an angle like it, to where it would deflect the bullets down. They're all angled down forward, so they won't be no deflections. Let's go back here and uh, see what I've done for the pistol shooting part of my little range. Some people might say, Mark, that's a bit far to shoot some uh, handguns, isn't it? And I'll, I'll say, no, not really. I got another little place on down the field here. Through this clearing of trees, about uh, 20 yards. Perfect little place to do some handgun shooting right through here. Well, let's ride on down. It's nice and private in here, very secluded. And what I like, even on a hot day, very shady. got the old picnic table here gotta knock the grass off that where I mowed <laughs> oh that roll of a uh, barbed wire you can say I'm going to use that for a invisible security system in certain places around here to kind of help detour surprise midnight visitors you can't never tell you get some of these damn meth heads around here wanting to find some steel scrap and try and sell it to get a bump, man. Just can't tell about these people. Right there, just your old pop can on a little tomato steak. I got a couple of them around. Another pop can. There's another piece of angle arm with a piece of the uh, bed frame. Splatter target on a wooden frame. Another pop can. This right here belongs to my cousin Steve. We've had this about three or four years and about wore it out. <laughs> Some more angle arm. And another PVC pipe frame right here that I made. And right here, good piece of uh, solid steel that I showed you earlier. Good quarter inch thick. No indentations. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm filming this out of sequence, so I'm going to try and put it back as straight as I can when I get to the editing part. 
Let's watch Randy do some shooting on this. Smith & Wesson, M&P 9. Excuse me. Smith & Wesson, M&P Shield, 9mm. There we go. Alright, Randy's got the uh, M&P Shield there, 9mm. Shooting 115 grain UMC Remington target rounds. And we're going to give it a try right here on this uh, big piece of steel I got. Just do a few test uh, rounds here and make sure there's no bad ricochet action. Ready whenever you are. All right, he was shooting from about 10 yards. He wasn't trying to get a tight pattern, just trying to hit the steel. So I'll look at the uh, footage here and see if we had any ricochets or anything like that. But from what I could see with the bare eye, didn't see any at all. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video. I forgot to mention why. I moved my little shooting area down from where it was before. Now, I mentioned there was a creek bed in there. Usually, uh, when the snow would melt, you know, run off from the mountains or what have you, that creek would run from, like, maybe the first of March till about the middle of April. Well, anyway, last year, the creek ran from about the middle of February until the end of October. First of December, it was running again. It was just a hassle to get in there, navigate around it, keep everything trimmed up, looking nice. It just ended up being a mud hole. I said to heck with it. That's why I moved my little operation on farther down the field. Thought I'd better throw that in there. Now, let's get to the end of the video. Well, people, let's get this video wrapped up, all right? We tried out the targets. They did what I hoped they did. They held up well, no dings, no indentations, and no bad deflections. Like I said, I got all of them kind of angled down like that from the top to avoid any major deflections. So they'll go towards the ground. I'm happy. I hope you all enjoyed my little tour of my improved shooting area. Like those fellows I mentioned at the first of the video, my range may not be as fancy or as elaborate as theirs. I may not have as much money invested in mine as they do theirs, but you know what? This is mine. It's the way I want it. And I like the way I got it fixed. I'm happy with it. Now, if anybody has any comments or suggestions, leave me a comment or send me a PM. And let me know, okay? I also want to thank Randy for helping me out. If it wasn't for him bringing those Milwaukee drill bits, I'd probably still be up in the garage trying to drill holes with them. So, hey, Randy, thanks a lot, man. Well, listen, this is Mark, Garage Gate 79. I'm getting out of here right now. When you go shooting, be safe.